How do? Ni hao. This is the James Redstone. A super cool climbing knife. I'm just going to quickly show you it. There it is. Look at that. Anyway, I'm going to come back to the knife in a sec. Just wanted to show you the box and something important on the box. James, super cool, nice wooden, um, sorry, it's not wooden. It's a cardboard box, nice cardboard box, little tag. But this is the bit I wanted to show you, okay? It's the redstone and it comes in coral, turquoise and PP, I'm not sure PP, and it's a serrated blade. But this is the important bit here. It's designed in Portland, Oregon, USA. Made in Yangjiang, China. Now, that's fine for me. Stuff that comes from China is, is some of it is really good. The Civivi, for example, superb, absolutely superb. This, I've had uh, other James brand stuff, superb, nothing to, to fault. But I know for some of you, US made is important. And if it's designed in the US, uh, a little bit of a shame that it's not made in the US. However, that's, uh, that's that out of the way. So the box is nice, nice cardboard box. It's got modern, oh, hang on, 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 focus. I can't focus. It's all, oh, there we go. Modern, minimal, everyday carry. Yeah, that's kind of the James uh, ethos, isn't it? They make cool EDC stuff. So there's a the little James logo, let's open it up. So it's got this nice little uh, cardboard box with a little tag. Open it up and uh, we're going to get the knife, don't worry, don't worry. A little uh, leaflet tucked in there. It's all really neat, really nice. This packaging is fully recyclable. Good. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the packaging. That's all that stuff done. Let's get the knife and have a look at that. So, uh, nice and snug in there. That's good. Right, packaging done. Knife. Let's have a look at the knife. Now, tell me if you haven't seen a cooler looking knife than that. That is really fun, cool, trendy, just nice. Now, I used to rock climb. Uh, I was absolutely useless at it, but I like it. I like rock climbing, the rope, the harnesses, the cables, the, the um, carabiners, all the hardware, the clothing, just the whole lifestyle is appealing. My son is into climbing uh, and we watch climbing videos on Instagram and, uh, and YouTube and uh, it's, it's awesome. Anyway, you need a knife if you're going climbing. Uh, why? Well, have you seen that movie where he gets uh, stuck on the end of a rope and then falls and breaks his leg and he's got to crawl through the uh, Andes, uh, the frozen Andes and stuff to get home? Oh, just thinking about it makes me cold. But, you know, you need a knife to cut your rope. And it needs to have certain qualities. So one of them is one-handed opening, okay? So imagine you're hanging off a rope. You get your knife, we'll talk about the clip in a minute, and it opens up easily with one hand. It's got this nice big hole in the blade. I'm gonna call it a hole. It's probably a technical term for it. It's a cool hole, look at it. And it means that you can very easily open it one-handed, even with a wet hand. Uh, there's nothing to grip onto because your finger, your thumb is actually going into that hole. So you open that and it's a good open. So it's, it, and it's locking. So that is now locked into place and it's good and firm, nicely locked. And it's got this little button to unlock it. Now you can't do it one-handed. You can't unlock it just with one hand because if you look, it's sort of got a bit of a wibble wobble to it. And if you pull one handed, it just doesn't, it won't slide. So you have to have it two fingers. Sorry, one, I say one handed, one fingered. You can't unlock it one finger. You need two fingers to unlock and then it's good to go. So two fingers, but then how do I close the blade? So actually you just need to adapt what you're up to those two fingers and then push the blade closed. So I'm not entirely convinced by that. That's the first time I've seen this locking mechanism. Uh, 
I know it's 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 on a lot of stuff. Anyway, we're going to come back to that in a sec. Let's have a look at the knife together, shall we? So uh, this fantastic, what did it say it was? It was coral. Yeah. So that pink is coral. Then you've got this turquoise and uh, PP. I'm not sure what PP stands for. Um, pretty perfect. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's metal. Anyway, this is metal. Uh, it's black. That's black metal. Um, and it's just a folded, it's folded, bit of metal, and then it's got these cool scales. How are they attached on? Let's have a look inside. Uh, uh, I think they're just glued on, you know. Can't see any pins in there. Uh, sorry about the focus. Is there any pins? No, they're sort of, oh, here we go. You can sort of make it out. Can you see in there? Right, I'm just going to. I'm going to get it so you can see the best you can. There you go. So the bit of the plastic, this is plastic, this scale, very, very highly textured plastic of some sort. And a little bit of the plastic is protruding into the metal frame to create a pin of sorts. So it's glued and uh, sort of I don't know, that's, that's not really a pin in a traditional sense, but it's sort of functioning as a pin. So that's how those scales are in place. And I don't know if you can make out, just get the, you can see it's sort of skeletonized. Can you see the light, the light source is here. Oh, let me focus again. The light source is shining through that plastic and you can see how the frame is sort of skeletonized. So that's how it's sort of constructed. And um, this stuff, Really, really textured, really good and grippy. But it sounds like it might be hollow, hollowish. It's very light anyway, it's a very light knife. And um, it's cool, it's really, really tactile. So uh, these are inspired by climbing holds, aren't they? So a climbing wall has uh, odd shaped, sort of rock mimicking, plastic molded. Uh, holds bolted to the wall and I think th these are inspired by that so they're good they're good and uh, light and grippy and uh, it's quite small uh, let's see that sort of finger choil there means I've got two three fingers on the knife uh, that's okay if I were to go any closer I'm getting near I don't want to have my index finger anywhere near this serration flip an egg that is sharp so um, it is actually quite small, so I've got, I've got extra large hands, but um, even with a, just a medium hand, I think you'd struggle to get four onto there. But it's not a... It's a kind of specific purpose knife, isn't it? It's for cutting rope. And maybe, uh, you know, an apple or two when you're out, out climbing or something. But it's not for heavy-duty, everyday, long-lasting work. It's... Uh, for a small specific task so the fact that I can't get all my whole hand on there it doesn't really matter because I can still get it. I can still use it so that's the, sh the size of it I, I haven't actually measured it have I um, <laughs> let's have a quick measure uh, so uh, oops hang on so the do you do that about the handle itself 93 millimeters the blade itself 63 millimeters uh, difficult to say what the cutting edge is it's this serration at the at the base and then this um, the rest of it is what a sort of a spear point yeah definitely spear point and then it's got the blade metal stamped on there so what's that say 2109 underscore 0578 that must be some sort of serial number 12C27, so a nice uh, sort of stainless steel. That's straightforward. Uh, the serrated bit, whew, I'm not sure how you'd sharpen that if it ever ever became blunt. And at 100 euros, it's not the sort of thing that you'd uh, want to throw away. Uh, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Look at the, the, the serration is one-sided. So that side is flat, and then this side is coming in. So you, I suppose you could, you could sharpen that. You knew what you were doing. Tricky stuff, though. 
Uh, so we've done the measurements, haven't we? Quite, quite chunky. Um, the, just the body itself is coming in at eight millimeters. But if you were to go from the very tip of the clip, it's one. It's thirteen millimeters thick altogether. So let's talk about that clip. Just a tiny little metal clip, like a sort of uh, bent paper clip. But exactly what you want, I reckon. Nice and light. It's good and springy, so it's good and strong. It's going to stay on your, on your wherever you clipped it to pretty well. Um, and there's no sharp edges, so you can easily. Uh, I'm just looking for something to clip it onto. Um, <clears throat> you can easily clip it onto your pocket without, uh, you know, just it just slides on. It's not going to snag on anything. It's it's good and gentle and soft so you can easily do that just without looking too in too much detail at what the hell's going on i like that clip nice and simple you can't remove it or replace it unless you fancy undoing hmm i mean there's a bolt there there is a bolt and the lanyard tube, oh, I don't know. I, I don't want to undo it. I don't fancy undoing it, but I suppose you could uh, push if, if you broke the clip. What else can we tell you? This bit of lanyard rope. So we've got the lanyard tube, which you can see goes all the way through there. And it's a nice metal lanyard tube. I like, I like the look of that. The string, utter garbage. Holy moly. 100 euros and this rubbish piece of string um that's disappointing especially when we're talking about climbing i mean a climbing knife i mean some of the climbing rope you get out there just that is lush climbing rope climbing rope who gets excited about climbing rope but there's some fantastic paracord and little bits of rope and stuff and they stuck a gray bit on just a bit boring anyway that would that would that's coming straight off and something beautiful and colorful is going on however it's kind of in the way um so the clip is good. I'm not sure I need that both, and especially if the blades open and this this bit this bit gets in there, and then I then I'm closing it, and then I've sliced sliced the lanyard. I'm not entirely convinced I would keep the lanyard rope. Anyway, that's a little decision to be made later. In the box, there's um, nothing else. Now, I was expecting a little tool, so uh, I've got the right little spanners for this. So if you wanted to adjust the tightness of the pivot, for example, that's got a little star-shaped bolt on it. So keep that bit from moving, turn that bit, tighten it, loosen it, however you fancy. And then similarly with the, um, the lock, it's got little bolts, oh, little star-shaped um, thing going on there. So you could adjust that if you really wanted to. We've got a nice, um, oh, hang on, focus, focus, focus. A nice bit of double jimping on the back there. So your thumb could be here, it could be there. It depends what you're up to. It's nice, uh, give you a bit of uh, options as to where you want to place your thumb. That's cool. We had a look at that side, didn't we? This side, it just says, flipping neck, focusing is difficult on this fella. It just says, James. And that's the brand. Well, you know that, that's why you're here. Uh, the blade is a nice sort of shiny satin finish. Got this interesting deep shape to the to the blade that's that side how about this side yeah it's repeated that side that's just nice it's just really good it's just really nice let's have a go at cutting do you want me to cut something is it worth is it worth having a go a bit of paper oh yeah nice and sharp out of the box and then the serrated bit uh, yeah, that's sharp as well. Sharp, nice. So 
My only concern with this is, in terms of practicality, is this double hand, double finger closing. So I can only close it with two fingers. And then once I've done that, I can close it. But if I'm dangling from a rope a thousand meters above a rock field and I need to cut something and the only way I can close my knife back to put it back on my pocket is oh, it's just a bit tricky just a bit tricky but it's a fidgety thing so I reckon I'll probably get get the hang of it over time there we go folks that, that is the James Redstone uh, an unusual one isn't it lovely though what, what a beautiful thing um, kind of specific, a bit niche, but lush. Uh, you, if you followed the video all the way through, you'll know that I'm not a hundred percent convinced by it, but I think over time would get used to it. Um, do I need one? Definitely not. <laughs> it's a very specific thing. Uh, it definitely is a climbing knife. Um, anyway, there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate you uh, sticking with me. Uh, click subscribe. That would be fantastic. Click like below. That would be awesome as well. And comment if you've got something to say about this knife. That would be cool. We could have a little chat about it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.